Amen. All right. Uh, Matthew, go to Matthew. I'm going to go to chapter 5. Give a little epilogue before I get started. Uh, this is the most destructive thing that any culture has ever experienced. Every culture that has, has, has opened the floodgates to this uh, anything gold sex, that culture has been wiped off the map, destroyed. And we are, because this culture has become pagan in its, in its operations and in its beliefs, turn me down a little bit. This culture has become pagan in its operations and its beliefs. It is, um, we are starting to see the manifestation of those cultures that declined. Right before those cultures declined, we're starting to see those manifestations. And before those cultures declined, they turned their back on God, the true God first. Then they began to, the Bible says, worship the creature over the creator. You saw certain sexual uh, practices that God said was wrong. And then you start seeing nature begin to convulse earthquakes, volcanoes, and all kinds. Of, and then you start, after that, you saw uh, foreign armies begin to occupy or take over the people who had sinned against God through sexual uh, perversion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so I'm, 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 I'm afraid that, um, that Satan's agenda is so far along that we're going to actually, in order for this generation to wake up, we're probably going to have to go through something uh, that's going to cause us to realize that, you know, this, this pie-in-the-sky religion is not going to get you through when they come to persecute you to say, do you really believe what you say you believe? You're not going to be able to hide no more. This is going to be, you have to be out and open with your faith now. Are you there? Now, so, uh, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you study this, you know that uh, this, this, this pornography thing is, the, is, 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 is worse than drugs. It's worse than drugs. I mean, it, because it, uh, uh, it, 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 it causes a person to begin to feed upon others to fulfill their lust. And that's why when you study these, these crazy people, these serial killers, all, they say they started with pornography. Now we got a generation of young men who grew up on it, who grew up on a smorgasbord of pornography through the internet. Now I told y'all when we was young, we had to go find it. You had to look for it. And it, wasn't, it, was, it, was, you had to look, and it was hard to find. You know, you had to, you, you, you hoped you ran across a magazine, or, you know, you might have, in that one magazine you might have had for a year, two years. But now these our middle school and elementary kids can bypass blocks on computers and see the whole world. And we wonder why they're so warped in their thinking because they have been exposed to stuff that even we as adults couldn't handle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some stuff will really blow your mind. And because uh, a, a, a child is so impressionable and they have not yet built mind blockers, the ability to, uh, to discern and decipher what's real and what's fantasy. Uh, let me say that again. They haven't really built the, the, the understanding to decipher from real from the fake. When they see this stuff on the screen, they assume it's real, and then they, go, then they grow up with a mentality that this is, a, the, this is real because they never had an experience other than that. Like, come on, y'all hearing what I'm saying? So most, so most men that you meet uh, uh, learn sex wrong. And they spend the rest of their life trying to fulfill the first uh, blast that they got when they first saw this smorgasbord of, 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 of sex. Uh, Y'all want to talk or not talk? And so once a man, begins, so a man goes through his life searching for that because he learned it wrong, he won't understand intimacy or love or loving a woman or even protect a woman really he women become objects because that's what pornography does to a, your mind is make everything an object of your desire or the object of your lust so women don't will never feel like you really want them they will after you get your what you want so can anybody talk or not talk now i'm gonna be plain because this is the last days ain't no way ain't no way we gonna we gonna play around now 
Not after what Satan is doing. I mean, he's putting this stuff right out in the open. Your kids are fight. Satan is fighting for their mind. Amen. They can't watch TV. They can't watch nothing no more. Amen. Anything they do, Satan is after of them. No matter, we was watching a cartoon. The cartoons is gay. I said, everything is just messed up. They, you mean you can't watch a cartoon? They are indoctrinating your child at every step. Every step they were getting indoctrinated. Oh. And even what I'm saying now, because the media has conditioned us to be, to be so sensitive to this homosexual thing that we even get offended when somebody actually stares up and says, that's not, that's not God's way. Christians are now offended trying to justify something that God said is sin. Now, it, now, if God said it's sin and I say it's sin, now, the problem that we don't get is they're not mad at you. They're mad at God. Their issues with God because the word is not yours. They taking it out on, they're going to take it out on us. But it is not our word. This word is eternal. That means when you die, it'll still be wrong. It's wrong in heaven. It's wrong in hell. It's just wrong. <laughs> There's no way around the wrong. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Only in this middle earth, this middle ground, this suspended place, suspension of time, can you, can you um, uh, indulge? But you got 70 to 80 years to indulge and figure out if it's wrong. Then eternity's already have decided it's wrong. Your last breath, you're going to know I was wrong. As soon as you ain't got no more breath, oh, that was wrong. <laughs> Too late after that. But our children need to begin to hear this kind of strong word because, you know, we, sometimes in church, we, 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 we want to take and hit our children with, with, with soft gloves, but yet the BET and MTV is hitting them upside their head with bats. And we up in the church, scared. That's too much. Well, they, they, they hitting them over the head. Nicki Minaj is hitting them over the head with a bat. Receive this wickedness. Your children are getting assaulted. And if the church doesn't get a message, then the Bible says that even the very elect ain't going to be saved. Oh, boy. All right. I'm preaching this because... Uh, I'm afraid that if, we, that, that, if, that if we don't check some of this stuff, that we're raising a generation of monsters. Amen. Just without natural affection. Amen. And we have to reel some of this stuff. Now, 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 I'm talking about your church kids. I'm not necessarily talking, you know, the world has to get saved. We're not judging them. We're talking the world got to get saved. But the church is who the Bible's written to. Okay, so you got to realize that, well, you got to realize your children already know what you think they don't know. They're already doing what you think they don't do. So you already kind of behind the curve. So you're going to have to catch up. Because right in their pocket on that iPhone or something, they already got stuff that you don't know about. Ain't y'all ever found out why these kids keep getting abducted? By people's abducting these children, and nobody ever says, why is the child in the room on the computer by themselves? Why is they chatting? Oh, nobody ever says the obvious question. They always say, just be safe. Hey, you be, how are you going to be safe when the, when, when the Internet's designed to be for predators? That's what it's designed for. Uh, the, the Internet was designed to give you the quickest boost of pornography. Like, it's like uh, instead of uh, smoking a pipe, it's an injection. You get, it right, you get it right in the vein. Go crazy after that. Okay, let's go. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Now, let's set this up. Let me give you a little, let me, before I read it, let me give you a little information. Pornography is a, visual, is a visual representation of sexuality. Visual representation of sexuality, which distorts an individual's concept. Turn me down a little bit. Which distorts the individual's concept of nature of conjugal relation. Now, what that means is, Something that is, is natural that God gave a man and a woman uh, in a natural setting of love, pornography would distort it and make what was supposed to be out of love, uh, 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 instead of people operating out of love, pornography would cause a person to operate out of lust. 
Now, the problem with that is, is that lust reduces you to, a, to the base form, like an animal. Animals don't think. They move by instinct. A, a dog will go sniff a dog without thinking. A dog don't know, is this proper? Is this good etiquette? Do I look funny? Dog will see a dog. Instinct says, sniff the butt, see what's cracking. If it's something there, uh, you, you know, that's a dog. Instinct. Why? Because dogs don't have no, dogs don't have a soul like we do to reason. Are you understanding what I'm saying? They move by instinct. Well, when a person gets addicted to something, Satan uses that addiction to cause them to live out of the base form of themselves. In other words, to live out of it like an animal instinct. So when a person gets on drugs, they no longer have to leave themselves. The drug take over. The drugs tell them, go get it. The drugs say, do this. The drugs say, do that. Say, man. They, they move instinctively. Now, 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 see, God expects us to be led and always be within our right mind, our right faculties. In other words, when we, a true, uh, uh, as Christians, we make decisions, and first we think, then we make decisions. The Bible says be slow to speak. We think first, then we make a decision. But when a person lives out of a base instinct, the instinct makes a move, like a person who's, a, who's, who's addicted to food. They don't have to think about eating. Their stomach say, I want this. And before they can even get the message, their feet are moving to, to whatever it was. They're they moving. In, that, in the area of food, they become an animal. They're living out of a basic instinct. Versus being led by the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit wants to say, tell us what we need when we need it. Or at least get an inward witness on impressing out of the word what we should do based up, versus living upon a, just a, a whim. Say a whim. So when a person becomes addicted, okay, if a person gets addicted to cigarettes, you, and once you're addicted, you ain't gotta, you, your, you, your mind never has to think about a cigarette. You ain't, got, you ain't got to worry about it because that cigarette going to talk to you. It's going to tell you, I want, your, your lungs going to say, oh, now, now. Because you have trained your body. You have trained yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I ain't got time to, should I do this? Well, y'all go a little bit further. Are y'all there? So when a person, uh, when a person, uh, uh, now, one of the problems with most people is they have addictive behavior. That means they have a predilect. No, I ain't gonna go with that big word. They have a, they have a, uh, they have a tendency to, uh, uh, they they have a tendency to overindulge. Like if if they get addicted to coffee, they can't drink one cup. Amen. They gotta keep drinking till they just running around, you know, high on coffee. <laughs> they have an addictive, and you gotta know that about yourself. See, I knew that about me when I, I knew that I, I knew that if I was to drink coffee, I would like it. I knew. I said, because it's caffeine, I, I probably would like that. And I know me, so I just didn't fool with it too much. You got to wean yourself because I knew I had a, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, God, can I help you? Oh, God. God. Go, go, go to James, James uh, chapter uh, um, 3. I think I'm going to 3. I want to show you something. Because, say, tendency. Remember that you have to know that because of your, because of your, 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 your um, the generational curses that were passed down from your mother and your father, the sin that you've indulged in, some of the DNA in your body. Because of those things, you have a tendency towards certain sin. It, some stuff won't bother others. And those are the ones that I always won't correct you because it don't bother them, what you're doing. Go to James 1. Are y'all there or not there? I want to help you. I'm afraid we're going to have to get a hold of ourselves. Because we, I'm so, I see some crazy stuff even in the church now. All right. Okay, okay, look, look at James 1. I want to show you, say tendency. 
That means I have, uh, uh, I'm, how can I say it? A better way, to, a better word is a weakness. I have a weakness in that area. So whenever Satan comes for me, he'll never come for me if, 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 I, if, if, if I don't have, if, if, if in me there was never a desire or weakness to smoke weed, he won't, he won't, he won't bother me with weed. Because he know I don't smoke weed. But if he knows there's a tendency, a weakness, then he'll come. He, the Bible says, you know when the Bible says no weapon formed shall prosper? We quote that all the time, but there's some stuff he formed has prospered on some people. There's some stuff, there's some stuff he formed that's prospered on you. No weapon of form shall prosper if you stand. But most times when the weapons form, we just don't stand. Oh, y'all want to talk about this. The Bible says, having done all the stand, stand therefore. With your lawns girded with truth. What happens if I don't stand? Then whatever comes is going to prosper. If I stand right here and, 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 and all of a sudden God say, don't move. And whoever come here, don't worry about it. I got, you don't get the victory as long as you don't move. If I start moving, then I'm not going to, then, then whatever them people come to do is going to prosper because I just got out of the posture of standing. Y'all got that? So we quote that scripture all the time and we shout and dance over it, but do we really understand if you be honest, you got some prevailing scars on you now. Where he did prevail right there. <laughs> oh, make the word fall down on the next word. Don't, just, don't take one scripture wrong. Make it fall down. All right. That's a line upon line teaching. Don't just, make, don't just, don't just, don't just go with one, one piece. Because it fits. It's a good shouting message. Make it fall down. Because Satan will prevail if you don't understand. If, 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 if Satan won't prevail, what you need armor for? Why are you putting on a whole, what do you need armor for if Satan can't prevail? You need armor, why do you need a shield of faith to quench every fiery dart? Which means he can hit me. Amen. If I need a shield to quench a fiery dart, means he has the ability to strike me. Amen. So me having, a, me having a shield is letting me know that he, has a, he can prevail if I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Are y'all there? Now say a weakness. Now, Satan will never come to you unless he knows there's a weakness in, the, in an area. Are y'all there? Amen. Now, look at, look at James 1. Look at verse 12. Are you there? Let me get the King James Version here. All right, verse 12. It says, Blessed is a man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. Now, somebody had emailed me about doing a, a teaching on weed, and I said, I ain't going to do you know, a whole teaching on weed. I ain't going to spend a whole teaching when I could tell you, it, right here I can explain it. God, don't, God didn't make that for you to do that. Because the Bible said God don't do evil. He don't tempt men with evil. So God ain't going to God ain't gonna grow nothing for you to get out of your mind when the Bible says be sober. So that's just kill that right there. Don't, get, don't smoke it. But you know, people want a whole long explanation because they want to wiggle room sometimes. You know, we want to wiggle with God like, God, you know, we want to wiggle the scripture. And it's like, no, it's what it says. God ain't tempting you with no weed. When we grow wild, don't matter how wild it grow. Poison grow wild. Poison. You, you, did, did you not know all poison grows wild? Ain't nobody. You ain't taking that in. Believe in God. It's, ain't that funny how people just take this out of context? No, God. When, when the Bible says be sober, it means be in your right mind. Don't have them. Don't be in a mind altered state. That's for your drinkers too. Well, Jesus, well, Jesus drank wine. But you have a weakness for alcohol. You have a tendency that you... It, it, uh. That's somebody arguing me up and down about what, you know, the Bible said they served wine. I said, have you, have you ever, was, was you a drunk? Then why would God give you something that he just delivered you from, knowing that this taste, it's a little taste. You need to get delivered from that taste. Y'all want to talk or not talk? This type of teaching may get people upset because we have a lot of uh, leeway with the gospel. 
because this church will do this, and this pastor say this, and they'll say that. And, and so, as if we got five books, we got one book Amen. that we have to find out what the Bible says, what this book says for us to be saved. Okay, who this? Now, he says, so, uh, verse 14, but every man when he is tempted, he's drawn away. He's drawn away of his own lust. Say own lust. Lust, weakness, tendency. I have my own tendency. I'm drawn away by my own stuff. My stuff is not your stuff. So I can tell you how to get the victory over your stuff because your problem ain't mine. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So in order for Satan to be effective, his strategy is to find out, like Samson, what is your weakness? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, not, are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Come on, talk to me. Not only does he need to find it out, most times he's manufactured the weakness in our life. Y'all catch what I'm saying? So because, now he, he does this, the Bible says the sins of the parents pass down to the third and fourth generation. So S Satan knows, I need a harvest of souls. I need a harvest of, 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 I need a crop out of this family. And I know that in order for me to get the rest of the people, I got to start sowing into the lives of the parents because they will pass this unrepentant sin nature down to the children and then I got a crop coming out of them. Is this, can anybody talk or not talk? So, and also he knows that so-and-so was saved. Great-grandmama might have been saved. But grandmama may have not have been, been, been strong or rigid with the word to cause her children. You know, because, you know, it's funny how the, the struggling generation becomes authentic. They get somewhere. They get blessed and prosperous. And then they don't give their children the same struggle so that the child can gain the same uh, fortitude, good word, fortitude. So they give the child everything which kills the struggle, which makes the child not need God. Y'all got me? Why were, why were we so strong? Nobody gave you nothing. You needed God. You, now this generation is too, they, you gave them so much, now they're arrogant. They don't feel like they need to, they look down on your religion. <laughs> the same religion that bought the joy that put the food in their mouth. Because they don't need it yet. Because we have not allowed them to see struggle or, or they have not been without. So whatever faith they build is going to be weak faith. It's a faith that's not tested. Because it's a faith under mom. It's a faith under daddy. And it's funny how in that time, these children start talking sharp like they know something, but they don't know you got faith under me. If I was to move and allow you to do you, the devil who I've been blocking you from would destroy you. The worst thing I could do is turn you over to yourself. Talk to me. Look. So he says, um, uh, what was my point? <laughs> that's what I was talking about. That was, must have been a good point. Um, oh, he manufactures my, 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 my weakness. Are y'all there? Amen. Grandmama, she was strong in the Lord, come up out of hardship, Jim Crow, segregation, discrimination. Working in watching white women's houses. Bite a tongue. Got to get in there. She got she to gotta bite a tongue because I got to feed these babies. And they, they, it ain't that grandma ain't got no pride, ain't got no dignity. She just doesn't understand I got to feed these babies and I can't tell her what I want to tell her. So I got to keep on going. So what's she doing? Learning patience, kind, long suffering, and temperance. Getting a mature faith. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Getting mature faith based upon struggle. A mature faith based upon struggle. You ain't hear what I mean saying. A mature faith based upon struggle. Amen. 
That means when it's based upon struggle, you got that lesson. That lesson was driven into you. Because when you thought, when you, when you tried to get prideful, the next day you went to work, the devil came with something to make you humble yourself even more. Y'all there? Grandmama did good. She's having babies. Because grandmama knew how hard it was. She does a, 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 an injustice to her next generation by saying what we've all said. I don't want my kids to go through what I went through. So we go to the other extreme, trying to give them everything and fight all their battles, going to the school, fight with teachers, fighting kids on the bus stop. We doing everything. Child, come on crying. We jump out the car on other kids. We, we, we behind this bullying law. That's why these children are so soft. They don't ever go through nothing. He gonna get bullied all his life. It don't matter if a law is there. He'll get. And this, this is what's so tragic about this bullying thing. The little black boys got more of a tendency of going to prison. Now, in prison, ain't no law. You gonna get? Then he don't know how to deal with confrontation. Cause all his life, somebody jumped in front of him and said, "You were just a victim." And what? Well, what? Well, down here, this was victim and predators. Oh, let me go on. Okay, so grandmama does a disservice to her children, and she begins to try to keep them from feeling the pain, which is noble, but it's, the Bible tells us that's not how we're supposed to raise our children. The Bible tells us that a child is no different than a servant. While he's young, he's treated like a servant, a slave. He ain't no better, though he be the heir of all things. He may have a great inheritance, but as long as he's immature... He's like, a, you treat him like a servant. Make him serve. Why? Because he needs to learn how to handle the inheritance. And he ain't going to handle that inheritance. Have y'all ever seen it? People, have y'all ever seen people, people build up their wealth and give it to their kids and the child them blew it within two years? Why? Because they never trained the child to handle. They gave it to them all at one time. And what happened to lottery winners? They be broken in debt and kill themselves. Because you can't hold anything that, that, that there was no process. You wasn't processed into. Oh, let me get on. Let me get on. Y'all there. Okay, so she's liberal a little bit with her children. And now her children, uh, now, so Satan says, okay, these kids had too much. They had it all. So I got to manufacture in the next generation uh, what I need in order to get to, to stay in this family. So he says, well, well okay, since the grandmama let off of her, then I'm going to, let's see, let me get uh, uncle. Let's get uncle come in. Uncle's touch you early because I got to manufacture this dysfunction that makes her open the door to me and my demons. So uh, somehow let's, let, let's, get her, get, let's let her get touched early. And he's forming weapons now. Let's let her get touched early. I need her to be molested because I, down the road I need a harvest of her children. And uh, grandmama was smart enough of herself, but she didn't pass it down to her children. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start working on them. So let me get uh, uh, uncle or cousin come over and give, this, give the little boy some weed when he's young. And because uh, that's going to start him on his road. And uh, so what, what's happening? He's building tendencies, weaknesses in this, in this generation that they're going to automatically pass to the next generation. So this generation he had to find to, to possess. The next generation will look for Satan. Yeah, yeah, you might want to talk. Now you may not look for the devil like, the, the, like this is what you, you don't think you look for the devil, but this generation got molested, this gener this, the next generation looks for love. They searches for love through sex. Can we? Are y'all understanding? So he has to manufacture the weakness in order to become the filler or the solution to it. So that's why when a person is, is ready, is, gets into an addiction, the reason why they got addicted because a light came on. The first time they tasted it or they, they had sex or something, a light came on. And all of a sudden, what, what, what happened? The, t the tendency, the weakness was filled by a temporary solution. 
Now, all that time, because they didn't have Jesus, they scratching at something. They don't know what is it, what is it, what's wrong with me, what is it? And the minute they find it, the minute they get that tendency feel, they chase that for life. Now, Satan ain't got to do much to them. He just letting them run their own, just run on after your own stuff. That was all through a weakness, through a tendency. Because they didn't understand their own lust. Is this too much? Are y'all there? Now, how, how can I, oh man, I got to get in this. Let me, so much here. Let's, okay, go back, go, go, go back to uh, 14. But when every man, when it, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Are y'all there? That means Satan has to get me to live out of my weakness. My, my weakness reduces me. See, the more I give in, the Bible says, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. That means the more of the world, the more of me I give into, the more I get my own will, my own will, my own way, the more I sin, the less of me I'm in control of. So, he, so once he gets me into some kind of bondage, now I don't control me. Whatever I'm bound to now masters me. So now I'm living at an instinct like an animal. So that's why people are saying, they, they, they crying, I ain't going to get on this pornography no more. And I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I be front? Can I? Now I'm going to be real because ain't no need us playing now. I'm going to be real. I ain't masturbate no more. And then they, 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 they mean it when they said it and all of a sudden they go towards it. As if something is pulling them towards it. The mind, even the mind, especially as a Christian, the mind is saying, don't do it. But the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak because they have created a pattern within themselves. What problem man again the whole world to lose his soul, which means they're not in control of their soul anymore? What does that mean? That means that they have given the enemy. Listen, are y'all are y'all ready? Say a wall. Let's say a wall is in front of me, right? A wall is built. If I, when I keep, when, when, if, if the enemy's trying to get in, as long as I got my wall up, he can't get in, right? But when I start sinning is when I start messing with him, looking at his stuff, trying to mess with him. So I'm going to remove a brick. What was blocking the enemy, now I remove a brick. He ain't always in because I still got bricks. But then I, I do it again, I remove another brick. Then I remove another brick. Now what I've done, I've, I've created an opening for him. That's what I've done in my mind, my will, and my emotions. I've created an opening for the enemy to come in. Now I'm addicted. Why? Because I don't have a, the Bible says, he who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. That means I've lost control of my soul. Why? Because there's an opening in my soul to the, to the sin that I kept doing, not realizing that every time I did it, I was weakening my defenses. To the point that I'm now I'm like defenseless because Satan knows the crack is always right there. I can always get in. So when I say I'm not going to do it, I can mean it. But do I have the power to, say, to, to, to actually carry it out? This is what addiction is. Let me break it down further. That means somebody got your 20 to the left, 30 to the right, 20 to the left. Got your combination. That means they don't have to. Uh, they don't have to persuade you. They ain't got. They ain't got to ask you. All they got to do is they come up on you. You know that's how that old people you soul tied to. More boyfriends. <laughs> More boyfriend, baby daddies, and all these baby mama people y'all soul tied to. Y'all ain't broke up soul ties. And you want to know why I keep on fornicating with him? Cause You tied to me. Why? Because you, we keep doing, we did something God said don't do. And the Bible says, if, if, if the Bible says, if I join myself to a heart, I'll become one with them. It don't just work because you're married. If you have sex with somebody, you, there's a covenant. I said there's a covenant made. Oh, y'all want to talk about this. There's a bond made, and then we become, and so that means you open to me. So no matter what you say, if I talk to you long enough, I'm a 20 to the left, 20 to the right, 20 to the left. 
And even after, and, and after you do the do, you see out your head and say, how did, how did he get in her? How did, how did he get in her? I was strong at church. You didn't break the soul tie. You don't know you're addicted to them. Well, I don't walk around thinking about them. That's not addiction. Addiction ain't thinking about them. Addiction is when something thinks about you and make you do it. See, I ain't got to be addicted to nobody. I, don't, I ain't got to think about you. But when I see you, you have enough pull to pull me in. Y'all, is this too much? Oh, I don't know about one talk. Let's move on. Are y'all there? Now, let me get back. Let me get back. So when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin brings forth, say, death. Yeah. Now, this death phase is a loss. Say loss. loss. Death always means loss. I said death always means loss. I lose my marriage. I lose my children. I lose my money. I lose my job. I lose my business. I lose my reputation. I lose my honor. This is, this is the wage, the payment that's coming because of the sin. That people I run around talking about can't nobody judge me but God, but they ain't sin. The payment is in their life now. Can't nobody judge me but God, but they don't see you getting judged now. The payment is in your life. How can I stand before a judge and not be judged? You, you getting judged for it. What's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the judgment? Divorce. What's the judgment? Domestic violence. Poverty. Lack. Your children start repeating it. If the Bible says you forget God, he'll forget your children. That's judgment. When God forgets, you mean he forgets? Because you didn't want to retain me. You didn't want to keep me. You didn't want to retain my knowledge. I'm going to forget your children. That's a judgment. That means if you don't, if you as a parent don't live for God, you leave your child without the defenses of God. Oh. And that's why I don't get off on this stuff where people shake their head. I don't know what's wrong with them. They just twerking. and they, they, They twerking because you was freaking. That's what we were doing. <laughs> they twerking now, but we was, we, was, we was in the club freaking. <laughs> the devil always multiplies it, goes to the next level with it. They wag their finger at them twerking, but forget they were freaking. Oh. <laughs> That's just be our dances. That's all, that, was, that was our old gangster dance. That was, I guess that, that we was gangsters. That was our gangsters. It was, called, it was called a small freak. We just. That's it. That's all you do when you're cool. You couldn't do nothing else. And now they just, the boys are twerking. The boys are twerking. If I seen. If I ever seen my son doing it while he's twerking, boy, I would. It would be his last twerk. It would be his last. I mean, I would, I would, I would kick him so hard that it, it wouldn't be no more twerking. You better hope it work after I kick you, because there ain't going to be no that. Got boys twerking. What's happened? Multiplication of sin. Let's go. Okay. Now, 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 now. Oh, let me get back to this. Please, please, let me help me. Help me to get back. Go back to Matthew. I can close. Let me go back and close. Is this too strong? Well, then I ain't preaching hard enough. I need to preach harder than this. This ain't strong enough then. I'm going to put too much cream in this. We need to just go straight black with this. All right. Go to Matthew uh, chapter uh, 5 real quick. We're going to get done. Say, I must know. Put it this way. Say, I must not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan's devices are the hooks he uses to catch the curious. Most of the time you got in trouble, you was meddling. Most people that's on drugs today, this was meddling. What's that? What y'all doing? What's that right? What you, what's that taste like? And, 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 and a wise crackhead or a wise fiend would have said, dude, I don't, you don't want this. I'm grown. Come on. 30 years. 
30 years. Cost you 30 years chasing this stuff. Wages of sin, death. That's the main thing you ought to teach your child. The way, well, you know, listen, I love you. I can't control what you do once you get old enough, but you know everything you do, you're going to pay for it. There's a wage to your sin. Let's go here. Look at Matthew uh, chapter 20, 20, 20, chapter 5, verse 27. It says, you have heard that it was said, you should not commit adultery, but I say unto you that everyone who looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already in his heart. This is the biblical account to me of pornography. There are some other accounts in there. I got a few other ones, but this is one. Listen to, listen, listen to this, because you got to understand, they ain't have cameras. They weren't taking videos of people. They might have been drawing stuff, but they sure ain't had no cameras. They did draw some stuff. And all them hieroglyphs of Egypt and all that stuff, they ain't show y'all the X-rated stuff that they was doing. The, the real hieroglyphs of Egypt, they was, them kings and queens was getting, they were doing some stuff. I've seen them. So, uh, because they don't want you to understand that what was will be. That pagan culture is coming back. That's all it is, the same culture. Like, the, why do you think the Romans was always running around naked? Every statue was naked. The Greeks was naked. Everybody running around naked. Everybody had this little feminine way. Why? Because it's going to be again. That's the culture we see now. Now, listen. The Bible says that everyone that looks upon a woman that looks after, after her has committed it in his heart. That means... That, that, they don't even have to be a stimulus. It's something already in a the, in the person's heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so just because we don't do it physically doesn't mean we don't have a lust problem in our heart. Because God is after the heart. The Bible says man looks on the outside. God looks at the heart. So God wants us to be free in our heart. Say free in my heart. Okay. Let me get done. Married men who are involved in pornography feel less satisfied with their conjugal relations and less emotionally attached to their wives. That's what pornography does if you marry. It makes you feel less satisfied with your wife. You don't want to be with your, your wife is not the fantasy. Your wife's a real woman. This is reality. She don't walk in with her pumps on and she ain't swinging from no ceiling and she ain't Come on, come on. Don't act like y'all know what I'm talking about. She, she ain't, she's a real woman. She has issues and moves, and she walks around with an ancient mama wave cap on sometime, and, you know, she, you know, she goes in the bathroom, and you're like, woo. You know, so all that sexiness that you, the fantasy that taught you about what women was, you start seeing the That's why men, a lot of times, that's why one of the number one disappointments of men when they get married is they find out that the woman was nothing like the fantasy woman that they had in pornography. That, that porn woman you run to, she's always ready. She's always there. She's always looking good and ready. Even if you go to a whore, a whore's always ready. But your wife's a real woman. And real women are not always ready. And they ain't always got on makeup. And they ain't always walking around sensual. And all, they don't do that. Real women talking about bills. You want me to, you won't be sexy? <laughs> oh, you won't be sexy? Oh, it's sexy when you pay that bill. I feel sexy after you pay the bill. <laughs> you making me feel sexy. Well, oh, I feel so sexy how you pay that lg &E. <laughs> Take me now. lg is paid. They ain't walking around just. And men, men don't understand that because they so used to this fantasy woman. Or unreal woman they were with that was that was just a fantasy. She was a fantasy in his mind too. But then he marries a real woman that has moves and he don't even know she has a, a cycle every month that he don't understand that stuff. So he's disappointed because in his fantasy mind, he feels that this should always be. But now now the problem with that is pornography has warped his mind to reality. That means what he needs to learn to do is he needs to renew his mind and recognize that this woman is not Wonder Woman or an acrobat. Amen. 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 Now, I'm, I'm talking straight talk. Because I know that I just got a counselor. I just got somebody ask me this very question. They didn't understand. I'm trying to tell them that I got somebody. I, I don't know how many women come to me with the same thing, the same question. Because women, Christian women especially, they love their husband. They want to be true to them. 
But Christian women are not fools. They know in the back of their mind something ain't right about how I'm feeling about some things here. And, you know, and I know that even when he ain't, what is going on? Quiet. That's when you got people thinking, when people get quiet and thinking. I ain't know it was going to be about all. Well, then what, what, what do we go to church for? This is what I want to know. Why go ask Oprah them? Why ask people who don't know? She ain't married. She don't know. This is what pastors should be talking about. Five, five ways to a breakthrough. Now, break that marriage through. Look at this. So, pornography causes a man to feel less attracted to his wife. Are y'all, do y'all understand that concept? Because she can't measure to that. She can't measure to that. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Wives notice, and they are upset by the difference. A wife notices. When a wife starts noticing that a husband is not as attracted to her, she, the wife will start looking at who you're looking at. The woman will look at who you're looking at. And when she see who you're looking at, she'll start changing. She'll cut her hair like that. She'll start trying to change because she thinks this is what you want. Most women, when they lose a man, first thing they do is cut their hair. They do something. They got to transform their image. Because they, they take that as total rejection of themselves. So I got to go do something to. Because he left her for another woman and she got to investigate that woman. Because I want to see how, what would she look like. Why is first day? A man <laughs> don't necessarily care about that. <laughs> if a woman cheat on a man, he ain't necessarily, he ain't necessarily caring about the man. He mad at the woman. The woman be mad at the woman. Where's she at? Be mad at the, who is she? That's the first thing. That's the first, who is she? What's that got to do with anything? He did it. Man going to jail. Right out right there. I ain't got time to let down no other man. You heard. Let's go. I'm going to take my anger out somewhere. I got to go somewhere. And ain't nobody else there, so you are the person. Look, pornography use, pornography use is a pathway to infidelity and divorce and is, a freq- and is frequently a major factor in these family disasters. See, pornography is the cause of incest. See, when, see this is why it's so dangerous. Me and my wife are watching something, and I suggest you watch it. It's called Family Matters. It was something that was on the open network. We, wasn't watching, we actually saw it on YouTube because I don't watch Open Network. But, I, but that video was pretty good. And actually it was on Netflix. And it was about a father that had three beautiful daughters and he, he raped them all, abused them all for years and years and years and years and years. And he was sick in his mind all that time. And most predators are not outside the house. That's why when you find, see, this is what happens when a man is in her and I know pornography is universal. Women are into it too. They're into it just as bad now. They told y'all they're on the computers now. But when a man is sitting there on that computer getting himself full of lust, see, see what lust does is see, are y'all ready? Can I, can I talk straight? Let me get, I'm going to talk straight. Now, see, what happens is, is when a person is receiving lust, they start off looking at something that's, that's basic. They just want to see naked people. They start off with the swimsuit issues. I'm talking plain talk, straight talk in church on Sunday morning because I know what we're really dealing with. So don't get holy now. We after some devils now. And in order to get a devil, you gotta, you gotta, uh, gotta, un- gotta peel that onion and go under them layers where they hide that. But they start with swimsuit issues, something easy. Can't, they walk past the magazines in the in the in the in the uh, supermarket or something with these uh, XLs and all these different types of poses with these women posing on the car. Has nothing to do with the Mac car, but they got naked women just posing on the car. Ain't nothing to do with the car. Just to catch a man. They know what catch a man. Say no, what catch a man. And they go from that to they want to see nudity. This is a little nudity. Cause, cause their their soul is really is really too sensitive. To too much sin. They sensitive right now. So a little bit they getting convicted. After they do that, then they want to see the act. Now they want to see 
Now that, then they become desensitized to, the, to, to, to seeing actual intercourse. They desensitized to it. Now let's go into something. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's just see women now. Now let's just see. Now let's let's see. The, let's see two two men and a woman. Let's see two three men and a woman. Good. Yeah. Then they keep going. Lust. The Bible says lust is not satisfied. Every every time they removing every they keep moving the bricks from that defense, and all of a sudden they get now because they have become so full of it. Now when they look at something, when they look at a person, when they should see daughter. Boy, didn't I say something? Ooh wee. I said it. I said it. When they should see cousin. Son. Even women. Women should see son. But he's a little older now and he's got a little, little, little six pack and now and and she she should see she should see son. Don't be tripping off these brothers. Sissy, 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 son. That goes both ways. Because I've seen women lust they, son, that lust they son. I've seen them lust they son. Son becomes that little man. And a woman, and, mo, and, and a lot of women, that single women especially, they have to fight that. They have to fight that in their mind. Because he's a little man. He ain't no more little bitty boy. He got a six pack and he walked right with his shirt off. And, he, and because she's been into this perversion, what should be normal, she don't see son. He don't see daughter. Or step, oh, this is even better, step daughter. He don't see that. He looks and gets aroused. Because the Bible says, if a man look upon a woman, he's, it's in his heart. He committed it. It's already in his heart. So he ain't got to have no stimulants. It's in him. The images, all of the stuff he fed himself is already there. So when he sees something that should be normal, he's got a, he's got a, he got, he got a, 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 a pornography heart. So even holding a baby, that pornography come in, up in his heart. A brother should see his sister. But instead of seeing his sister, he sees this is just another, this is just a, a chick. Matter of fact, y'all ready for me? Can we talk straight? He don't even see face. He see body. See body without a face is universal. That could be anybody. That could be anybody. And that's what pornography trains you to do. It trains you not to see the person, but see the object of your release, of your desire, of your lust. So even though a normal, healthy man should see this is somebody's daughter getting abused and used by these men on his screen, but he don't see that part. All he sees is the object of his release. And so now we have such an up spike, crazy going through the roof of molestation and abuse. It's all coming from that midnight hour. Click, 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 click. And because our children have outsmarted us by making us not, by us not understanding technology, we've given them pornography. And you don't even know the phone that you wanted to give them so they'll be cool, mama. Is exactly, if you check that phone, be all kind of garbage on that phone. That's why they always have it locked and don't, don't vibrate because they don't want you to ring or nothing. They don't want that phone to make no noise around you. That phone going off all the time because they got somebody emailing them, sexting them. And they doing that stuff right in the house. Can, 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 I guess I know y'all can't. No, 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 no. I'm trying to overload you here. I don't want. I don't. I don't want you to feel comfortable about this. I want this to bother you. Amen. Among couples affected by one spouse's addiction, two thirds experience a loss of interest in sexual intercourse. See, usually the spouse, the, the, the other spouse, 
this has a loss of interest. Both spouses perceive pornography viewing as tantamount to infidelity. That's, 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 when, when it, that's how it should be. If your spouse is into pornography, you ought to see it as that, because that's where, that's where it's going. Amen. Did Jesus not say if you done look at it, you commit adultery? Many men and women, you marry, but you've never repented of adultery. Because you think, I ain't never had no sex physically with a person. But that's not the adultery. The adultery was, you. if you've been in pornography, every time you was looking at it, you were committing adultery on your spouse. You could have a curse of, a, the, you could have the sin of adultery on your life, destroying your wealth and your prosperity, because you ain't never repented, because you didn't think you had to repent of it, because you never were out to get nothing physical. Preachers don't even preach this stuff no more. That's why preachers are having sex with little boys and stuff. They don't preach. They don't even preach on it. I learned people don't preach on what they're into. It's very difficult to preach on what you're into. Look at this. Pornography viewing leads to loss of interest in good family relations. When you see your children withdraw, their minds done got blown some way. They done seen something. Pornography is addictive, and neuroscientists are beginning to map the biological substrate of this addiction. They have proven that pornography... Um, uh, it um, functions in the brain where drugs function. It releases dopamine and it functions the way a, a drug does. That's why it's addictive. Like gambling opens that same place up and a person gets addictive. See, anything addictive functions in that same place. And so that's why a person gets, that's why it's such, so addictive because it's a high. It's a literal high. And, it's a, and, it, and it also, listen, are y'all ready for me? It's also a, uh, it's also a, a release, a relief. It's, it's also, a, 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 it's an escape, that's a better word, to a world you can't control, to a world you can control. This is why so many men are addicted to it. It's not the fact that they just want to see the sexual stuff. A lot of it has to do with, in that world, they can control, but they can't control the natural world. But they can go in the fantasy world, and they can control it. Come on, talk back to me. Users tend to become desensitized to the type of pornography they use. <laughs> That's why I'm saying a guy that goes to a strip club and sees strippers, he don't see that as somebody's daughter because that's what he uses. He's desensitized. That, that girl's the same age as his daughter. But he can't see his daughter because he's desensitized to it. Because that's how he gets his lust off, so he can't see what gives him pleasure. I'm talking so much better than what y'all responded, but that's all right, because I know everybody quiet don't mean they ain't listening. This one in messages is... Ah, ah, this is a Harry Carey right here. Y'all there? Users tend to become desensitized to that type of pornography. They become bored with it and then seek more perverse... Lust is not satisfied. After a person gets into it, they, it's like it ain't going it to, it's the same, it's same way with getting high. It's the same way with getting high. You start off drinking, and all of a sudden that drink going to take you to that certain spot, and then all of a sudden if you, if you, you, might, you start wanting something else. Then a the person get into weed, and weed take it so far, and then just, let's add something. Before you know a person's on heroin. How do they get there from drinking? Lust ain't satisfied. Same way with, 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 same way with pornography. You, you know, many, uh, many men think they can beat this. The wisest man in the world couldn't beat it. That was Solomon. And, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and that lust took him out. The wisest man couldn't beat this. So I'm telling you, you ain't going to beat this. Are y'all there or not there? I'm saying a lot of this for these young guys, too, and young girls. So I want y'all to understand that they made, they made this stuff look cute. I know they got all these little, these little videos, they, all this stuff that they do, and y'all got so much exposure to the internet that it's become, y'all desensitized to it yourself. Yeah. And that's the reason why movies have to get more uh, graphic and sexual, because people are so desensitized to it, it's like they got to do something, just go way out to get people to, because it's almost like, it's almost like a person who's used to a certain dose of medicine. It's like that they don't feel it no more. So they got to come with shock, more shock, more shock. 
to get you to, to respond. Users tend to become desensitized to that part. Okay, men who view pornography regularly have a higher tolerance for abnormal sexuality, including rape, sexual aggression, sexual promiscuity. Now, the FBI, they interviewed two dozen of the, of the, of the all-time famous serial killers. These are men who committed multiple murders. Alarmingly, 88% said that pornography was the stimulant that led them down the road of not being fulfilled with, with, with just normal sex till they kept going and 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 they kept going darker and they kept going deeper and darker until they ended up into that weird place total demonic possession of the mind. Now y'all hearing what I'm saying? Some of you young girls need to be careful about these young boys that you think like you and you think they're cute. You don't, you don't understand, honey. He's, his level of fulfillment is too far. I just said something right there. He's been in too much. He's, he, he, this, this boy's too, he's way out there. Versus your little church self. I don't know he love, he love me. This boy's way out there. Have you somewhere way, way and then all of a sudden that's why you never get about. Once he gets, ain't nobody gonna be able to talk to you. Mama can't, you can't hear after that. You can't hear nobody. You just be floating. He, just, he call you, you just be floating. Just yeah. Ain't nobody, you be fighting your mama, leave, run away and everything. This boy has become a wizard through sex. That's what a, did you know it's what a pimp is? It's a wizard. He's a controller. He's a witch. He's a controller. And he start controlling you. Y'all know men like that. These are the men that move in with you. They got into your house that one night, and they move in with you. And then you paying bills for them and buying them clothes. You try to figure out, how did this Negro, how did I get to this? How, what, the, he, 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 he worked it. That's all he did. Dead broke. But he perfected. He perfected that thing, boy. And even when you get a good man, you'll be thinking about the wizard. <laughs> the wizard was the one. Y'all know you. It's where women look. They ain't going to say nothing. They know who the wizard was. Dead, broke, didn't have nothing, kept you always mad and angry, but boy, the wizard worked something. He was working something supernatural on you. You got to train your daughters. Brother, come in, tattoo was always there. He's too, he's too far. He's too far. He's too far. You ain't, we ain't got to do that. He's too far. He's too pretty. His nails are too good. Turn long. He's too, he's too far. No, his his whole facade is to is to is to is to mesmerize a woman, and that's why you see these these guys are these guys. Are, that's the, if you ever understand the pimp culture, they, pimps was like women. They talk like women. They walk like women. They would dress all flamboyant like women. That's the way. That's the way women because women like that stuff. They nails was longer and their hair was more pressed and permed. They was like women. They was a feminine man. But now this generation got little boys that's got baby hair and just cute and just smooth skin and just don't look like they ever worked. And all y'all little entertainers are like that. You can't even tell. They, they messing y'all up with this baphomet stuff, transgender. You don't know who's who or what's what. You be looking, you got to look twice. Is that a boy? And they just cute as they want to be. And your daughter's just falling all over them. And she don't understand that's the wizard. He's too cute. Some of you women need to say, you know what, you know what, listen, 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 listen. I, I ain't going to even, look, you, you know what, I know you too cute. You ain't going to put me through this. I know what you're going to do. You too, you look better than me. I can't be with no man that look better than me. We both in the mirror getting out, doing out, doing out, nah. Using each other's stuff, nah. 
hands are new. <laughs> Nigga got new hands. Ain't never did no work. Hands are new, pretty, like, like, like a baby. New hands. Don't touch nothing. Walk around with his pinky out. <laughs> with, with, with skinny jeans on. The, that European style, just looking all effeminate. And, and girls, just because these women don't understand no more, they just look for pretty. And these brothers just bash them over the head, giving them some sex and giving them age too. Because these boys are so pretty, they drawing, they drawing, they drawing me into it. They drawing, they drawing, they drawing other spirits too. See, y'all gotta understand that if you want to, just like if a woman tries to try to, this silly book, think like a man. That was the silliest book in the world. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get you offended with that. That was silly because you shouldn't treat a woman to think like a man. Don't no man want a woman think like him. I, when I when I want to get married, I want a woman. If, I want I don't want no man. I don't want a woman think like me. I'm a man. I know how I think, and I don't want no woman thinking like me. I'm attracted to her opposite. I'm attracted to her femininity. If she becomes like me, we gonna be fighting. That's why y'all fight now because y'all trying to change each other to each other instead of saying God made you feminine, He made me masculine. Let's just walk in our role. We think it like no man. You want to think like a woman. You want to be feminine. You want to be, you say man. Now all the women that think like a man, guess what they do? They draw what men draw. You draw a woman. You get a boy to think like a woman, what's he going to do? He's going to draw a man. Let's go on. Oh, I, ain't got, I got clothes. I'm, I'm helping y'all though. I know I'm helping you. Prolonged consumption of pornography by men produces strong notions of women as commodities or sex objects. Pornography engenders uh, greater sexual permissiveness, per, per, permissiveness uh, which in turn leads to greater risk of out of wedlock, births, and STDs. These, turn, these in turn lead into more weaknesses and uh, liabilities. Child sex offenders are more likely to view pornography regular or to be involved in its distribution. See, they, they finding out, everybody, every time they find a child sex offender, guess what they go find? His computer. He always had child sex stuff on. He was always watching it, and that's what gave him the appetite for it. Anything you feed or grow, anything you starve or die, the Bible says resist the devil, the devil will flee. But you feed the devil, he'll grow in your life. And, and see, the pornography will feed something in you. And it'll grow bigger. Y'all there? Yeah. Many adolescents who view pornography initially feel shame, diminish self-confidence, and sexual uncertainty. But these feelings quickly shift to unadulterated enjoyment with regular viewing. In other words, you know how the Bible says your conscience have, can become seared? That's what happens. A person's conscience gets seared. And they no longer feel convicted when they do it. The presence of sexual, sexually oriented businesses significantly harms the surrounding community, leading to the increase in crime and decreases in property values. Used to be these businesses within the, you know, some back seedy alley. Now they right out, right out. They just right out there. You can just get it. If you ride past, you got to, oh. Go like that and ride past. The main defenses against pornography are close family life, a good marriage, and good relations between parents and children. Coupled with the deliberate parental monitoring of internet use. How can you give your child something like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. They're going to try to get it anyway, but boy, you ain't going to get it from me. I, you know, you ever seen those silly parents that would let their child, I had friends like that. They mama and them would, well, I just want to let them go on, drink and get high around me so they don't do it out there. Like, that's the most ignorant thing in the world. What do you mean let them get high around you? That's the last thing you're going to do around me. You know why? Because even when you're getting high when I ain't around, you're going to be scared of me. Amen. I want you to know I don't respect that. But if you get high around me, you're going to do everything. And the, and the ones that got high around their mom and them end up getting on heavy drugs. Then they brought, they brought little girls in the house, still having babies in their mama house. No, you hold a standard. Even if you've messed up yourself. Don't even let your child tell you, well, you did it. I did it. But that don't mean you're going to do it. I did it. You ain't going to do it. Because, you know, these children are a little sharp. They'll throw, try to throw your past up. Well, I remember when. Well, yeah, I, I remember when, too. I ain't never said I didn't do it. But I'm saved now. And I don't do it. And you ain't going to do it. You know, they'll throw it up and convict you. 
Try to make you feel like a little pity parenting. Like, you know, you, y'all, I, I heard uh, Auntie said you, well, yeah, we did a whole lot of things that you ain't got no business knowing my past. Amen. You don't need to know everything I did. Even if you do know, that shouldn't, that, I'm going to still teach you right. Just because you failed in your own life don't mean you lowered a bar for your child. You still say, look, I, met, I was down here, but baby, for you, it's going to be up here. Even if it means you get mad, whatever, I'm going to keep that bar up here. Because I, I, can, I can do nothing and you can, be, you can just fail. Failure is just doing nothing at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the main way is, listen, husbands and wives should monitor internet use with each other. They should know. You shouldn't have no lock passwords where your spouse can't get on your computer and see what's happening. Your phone shouldn't be locked to your spouse. It's my privacy. Now, with all this going on in the world, I don't need that much privacy. I need you to see what I'm doing sometimes. Because, you know, you, the Bible says, ain't no good thing dwell in the flesh. Don't trust your own self. So you ought to monitor every now and then uh, who you chat, who, what's, what you doing on Facebook? Let me see, what you doing? That's where they're getting messed up at on Facebook. All these old flings, old flame people you've met up at night chat. Now you need to look at, get into that, what are you doing? Find out what they're doing on that internet. That'll save your whole lot because most times people sin now, they got to use the internet to sin. They're going to do something, they're going to look up something, search something, they're going to find something on the internet. You monitor the internet use of your, of your, of your spouse. And, they, and if they really are uh, being straight with you, they ain't going to have a problem with it. Amen. My wife, my phone ain't never locked. I got two iPads, I got three, four laptops, I got all kinds of stuff. And it, she's no, and it's her. Matter of fact, they got laptops up there that I that I have. If I was doing, if I was into something, brothers up there in that booth would be like, well, Pastor, you got all this stuff on this computer. Can't, are you scared to let somebody look at your computer? Are you afraid? Is there something on your phone that if somebody really went through it, then you are you are addicted? Because because Satan's goal is to keep you in that until you die, and not realize you're gonna get judged for that. The wages of sin is really death. I know they don't preach it no more. I know preachers ain't saying nothing about it, but I'm telling you, you could die in your sin and go to hell playing around trying to get pleasure. That's what these young kids need to understand, that it's not just, you know, go to church Sunday morning, shake the preacher hand, get baptized, I'm straight. You have to live for God. You have to live your life for Jesus Christ. Because if you get saved and you go back out here doing wrong, the Bible did not say once saved, always saved. You can you if you go out here and commit keep, keep, keep committing sin, the Bible says God will give you over. He will give you over. In other words, he'll let you go if you want to keep doing things. Now I'm not saying I'm not I ain't saying it to judge you. I'm saying it to give you some awareness that this is destructive, and I guarantee you this is touching your family in some way. This is in your house. This is somewhere in your life. I'm telling you, it's it's touching you. And if you don't wake up and get aware. That I got to become a spiritual warrior and fighting and pleading the blood over my family and making sure that I understand what's going on. Because if you don't, the enemy's already in. He's already working to, to, to bring total destruction. I'm telling you, man, there's some stuff that's coming. I mean, even now, I mean, this stuff, is, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Sometimes when I look at the church world, I just shake my head like, Lord, I don't know, Lord. If you, I don't know who's going to be saved when this thing wind up. Because, I mean, what's happening right now is so strong. You got to be close to the cross because there's so much deception. And we got all kinds of people that was once saved and preachers are saying now there's many roles to God and you don't have to live this word. And, you know, God is okay with, with if you're gay and God's fine and everybody's going to heaven and, and, the, and it's just all contradiction of the word of God. And people are looking for word now. That's why people keep calling me all the time on the internet, looking for, I'm on, on Facebook, I mean on uh, YouTube, they looking for the word. Like, man, a guy has somebody called me from Bahamas. Uh, the other day, looking for the word. Said, my pastor won't even tell me what you tell him. He won't even preach this. I knew I was wrong. I just needed somebody to confirm it. People know. But our preachers are so in love with celebrity that they won't offend nobody. And the Bible says that truth is going to offend. 
I shouldn't become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Think about all the people that are telling these people God is accepting that you gave. When them people die, if they die in their sin and go to hell, they going to hate the ones that said they loved them. The ones that accepted it and tolerated it, they're going to hate them. But the ones that they're going to love are the ones that tried to tell them. Your children are not going to respect you by you trying to be young on their level. Just tell them. They might get mad. They might not hug you. They might not love you. They might not smile at you. But at least I'm trying to save your life. I ain't got time. I'm, me and my wife are friends. My child ain't got to be my friend. They my friend now because they're older. But if they decided they didn't like what I said, they can go on. But I'm going to save your life by telling you the truth because the problem is our children are getting in these weird situations with no information. They don't know not to do it. They don't know to say no because they go to school and they're telling you, yeah, it's okay. The music is saying it's okay. The movie saying it's okay. The war shows everything saying it's okay. Grown folks standing around saying it's okay. Grandmama in the club saying it's okay. Nobody is saying it's wrong. So we have a whole generation that's warped when it comes to truth. And that is not the way it ought to be. God is going to hold you accountable. Listen to me close. If you didn't hear nothing else, I'll say it. God going to hold you accountable for what you let in your house. If you open the door to that stuff and it come in your house and get your kids, God going to hold you accountable for it. I, don't, I ain't saying your kids can't get inquisitive. Kids going to find it. If they press it in this world, they going to find it. I ain't saying they ain't going to find it. But you better say, I ain't letting it in. And I ain't sanctioning it. And you won't see it in here. And you won't watch it in here. And you have the right to go in any room. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no uh, privacy in my house. We just take the door off. Won't be no door in the house. My room, my space. You got that from white people. Ain't no space in the black community. <laughs> we like good times. Ain't no space in her. JJ and them living on the couch together. Ain't no space in her. Take the door off. Ain't no space. You want to go in and look under and look up in and you got to be, yes, you do need to do that. I know they tell you, see, even these movies making you feel guilty as a parent. Well, you know, don't just give them their space. And they, see, 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 the devil is using media to program you to think that if I just love them, they'll come around to it and they'll, they'll get it there on their own. And I just, they'll, they smart enough. No, they ain't. That's movie. Children need, this is one of the reasons why when young men get around me, they love me because I'm the first one started telling them boundaries. And started, they want to know how far to go. So you go in a room, you go look at, give me your folder. Let me see your phone. Well, you got a phone for? You 13, you, who calling you? You ain't got no job. Do you have a boss need to get in touch with you? You ain't got no job. It ain't about no money. What do you, got, what do you need a phone for? You just won't fit in. Give me that phone. I told you, go get that old phone that they'll be embarrassed to carry. The phone that they got, this is the numbers. No, and ain't no, it ain't no internet. It's just a little number. This is the numbers, and they, that's it. Ain't no internet on that. Carry this. You want to be in touch with everybody here? Carry this. But stop allowing the culture to dictate your house. I don't care what your child's friends do, cause they'll come in with that stuff. What they do, I don't care what they do. You ain't going to do it. And if you get to the point that you think you're too big and you will do it, I'm going to show you you're not. And if you still do it anyway, you're going to have to run away. And if you run away, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put your face on this prayer wall and pray for you and just keep praying for you until the Lord going to take you through so many changes. You prodigal going to come. You pro your prodigal butt going to come back one day. I ain't running after you. I ain't going to be chasing you and I ain't going to be doing nothing. I ain't going to be crying. I'm just going to, we going to just put you on this wall. Y'all lift them up. You see them in the street, tell them Jesus love you. Get back at church. Jesus love you. Yeah. 
Y'all need to stop that stuff. As a, hus as a husband and wife, you have to say, am I loving you or am I lusting you? And if you are, if you, if you can't be honest, then y'all need, need to start praying, Lord, renew our mind. Come on, we all been into some stuff. Everybody grew up in some stuff. Come on, we all have been in some stuff. Nobody has done, I ain't met nobody yet who has never been in anything. And we learned this stuff wrong. We learned sex wrong. We just learned it all wrong. And we have to learn. And that's why the Bible tells us to renew our mind. And, that, and, that, and, we re, and I learned that Christians will renew their mind when it comes to smoking or drinking or doing outside sin. But when it comes to this sexual stuff, they don't renew their mind in that. They still do the same stuff they were doing in the world. And that can't be right. Amen. This was my bondage in the world. Why would God still be in this? And, and then you got to renew your mind till you look at your spouse and see them and learn to love them. You got to learn to love them. You got to learn to create an intimacy. You got to learn to talk. You brothers now learn to talk. Talk to your woman. That stimulates, that's what stimulates affection all the time. Talk to your woman. And I ain't talking about talking about how much you paying the bills and how you a good man. I'm talking about just talk to her. Talk about her day. Talk, just talk to her. Now, I ain't talking about being her best friend because you can't be. You ain't going to be no best friend. That's, a, that's that old, that's foolishness. You can't be no best friend. I'm your husband. You might, you might need a woman to talk to, too, but you, 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 you talk to your woman. Don't jump on her. Don't jump in the bed with her. Talk to her. Discuss the day. Are y'all, is this too much? Because you're trying to renew your mind so you start seeing her and not an object. Honey, you need to start looking at your man and stop looking at what the superficial stuff that women judge men by. And see him. And then, when you renew your mind about sex, you can do normal things and have the time of your life. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a hard message, but it's a needed one. It's a needed message. It is so needed. We are in such a bad situation now. And marriages are being destroyed because of this. And if you got a problem, listen, man, problems are problems. I mean, every man at some point has dealt with this in his life. But you have to be wise enough to realize you can't control it. Many, many men that try to control their drug habit end up out there for 30 years because they couldn't control it. We as men will never reach for help. That's one of the problems about being a man. We don't, we, 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 like, we had, it's true, if a man be driving, he lost, he ain't gonna ask nobody. He'll keep circling until he, well, I'm, no, I got it. He, he, can't, he can't say he lost. The woman over fuming, you lost, you know you lost. Girl, girl, no, we went this way the other time, it's down here, no. You lost. Don't you see the forest? <laughs> you on the dirt road driving, he lost, man, you lost. Why can't you admit you lost? Amen. At some point as a man, you got to admit, man, this thing's, too, this thing's bigger than me. Amen. God showed me some things as a man. When, when I was younger, I was very strong, you know, very muscular and built strong, just very strong, just always my whole life, especially when I, in, in, my, in my early 20s. I mean, I was swole, you know, and uh, I, I, always, I, always, I, always phys I was always a physical person. When I worked, I worked hard. I could work all day. Just, just you know, you, you couldn't give me a task. I would work all day. And, and, and I relied on my strength. And, and, and the stronger I was, the less I needed my wife. Because I was too strong to need her. I started going through some health stuff, going through a couple of things. It's real funny how when you don't have your strength, you'll reach out. That's when our relationship grew. Because before then, I was too strong. I was, I was manning up all the time, quiet, inhaling it all, holding it in, walking around with it all in my, on my chest, and I realized that God gave me a woman to help me. I wasn't even using it correctly, taking out my lust on her because I was just trying to get it released and holding in all of the stuff I should have been telling her. And this is the reason why brothers be committing suicide now. Brothers are killing themselves. Black men are killing themselves faster than anybody. 
I know they make you think these little white gay boys killing themselves. It's black men. Young black men, too, now. Old and young black men are the highest suicide rate because they walk around holding in because they have an image of what they were told a man was. And they try to live up to it, and they, you're a man. Don't you cry. Stand up. And they're trying to do it. And they're making their women think they're Superman instead of saying, uh-uh. I can't, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm strong, but I ain't that strong. And God gave a man a help me, not just for a sexual release. That's why we only, that's why we're so addicted to sex, so we think a woman is only for a sexual release. She's also a pressure reliever. Not sexual pressure, but my mind. The Bible says Samson wasn't after sex. He laid his head in the lap of Delilah. She had rest. He needed somewhere to rest his head. Wasn't about no sex because he was having sex with that whore. Remember he had sex with the whore? He jumped up, took the gate off, threw it on the Philistines. But with Delilah, he laid his head. He wanted to rest. That's what we, that's what we need from our women, to rest. And if you're not getting that out of your wife, man, you are you're going through life. You're going through life with one leg. And, the only, and one of the things that will keep you from that intimacy is pornography and lust. You have to begin to recognize, I need help. Are y'all there? So we're going to pray today. I mean, I really sense that here this morning. I'm not just talking to the men, because some of you women, y'all know y'all bound. You know it. Your mind is rotten as all outdoors. You, you can't think straight to save your life. Your mind is twisted because you've been in that stuff too. The devil's fighting you. You dreaming about it. You can't be around men too long without thinking about it. Your mind is warped. You have to begin to build back up those defenses so you can keep the enemy out of your head. 